What is up guys, it's Cal, and in this video we'll be taking a look at Guardian Druids on the battle for Azeroth Beta. We'll be looking at their baseline abilities as well as passives, then we'll be taking a look at their talents along with their PvP talents. Now I'm gonna go ahead and say this, there aren't really a whole lot of changes. But anyways, let's get started. So here are all the baseline abilities for the Guardian Druids. Let's start off with the Bear Form by itself. So Bear Form will now increase your armor by 220% on live, that's 200%. And your stamina is increased by 45% on live, that's 55%. So your armor and BFA, your armor will go up, but your uh, stamina does go down. So now for Rebirth. There are two small changes to it. Rebirth is obviously your combat res, but it will now cost 30 rage, up from 10 rage, and you can res a player to 100% health instead of 60% on live. Still reses them at 20% mana though. Then for revive, revive is unchanged. It's still your just normal non-combat res. Res someone to 35% health and mana. Remove corruption is unchanged, eight second cooldown. Removes all curses and poison effects from the target. Regrowth is unchanged. It is a hot, as we all know. Heals the target for some amount, and then it heals them for some more over 12 seconds. Uh, survival Instincts is unchanged. It has a base of 4 minutes recharge. 2 charges reduces all damage you take by 50% for 6 seconds. That's the same baseline on live as it is in BFA. And then for Frenzied Regeneration. So the effect of it has actually changed. It still costs 10 rage. It still has a recharge based off your haste. And it still has 2 charges. But it will now heal you for 24% of your maximum health over 3 seconds. Whereas on live it healed you for 50% of all the damage you took in the last 5 seconds. No longer does that. Now heals you for a strict 24%. Uh, bark skin is unchanged. Still one half minute cooldown. Reduces the damage you take by 20%. And last 12 seconds. Prevents damage from spellcast delays. Usable while stunned, frozen, capacitated, feared, or asleep. So that's parts the same as on live. Iron fur has not really been changed. I mean, it still has a 0.5 second cooldown. It costs 45 rage. But it will now increase your armor by a set amount. On live, it says it increases your armor by 65%. In BFA, it tells me that it increases my armor by 3,477, which is actually just so happens to be about 65% of my armor. So the amount of armor that it increases doesn't really change, uh, but it lasts for 7 seconds. On live, it lasts for 6 seconds baseline, but I believe your artifact weapon may that go up to 8 seconds, but they settled for 7 seconds in BFA. And of course, you can still do uh, multiple uses of it, and they overlap. Entangling Roots, unchanged. You can still root a target for 30 seconds and then damage can cancel the effect. Dash has actually been changed. Uh, I think maybe kind of a nerf, but it's up to you, I guess. Its cooldown is being reduced from 3 minutes to 2 minutes. That's the good part. But it will now increase your movement speed by 60%, which is down from 70% while in cat form. And uh, it lasts for 10 seconds, whereas on live it lasts for 15 seconds. Prowl is unchanged. Use it, activates cat form. It's your, you know, stealth. Stampeding Roar. The only change to Stampeding Roar is that its ra range is being increased to 15 yards up from 10 yards, which is pretty nice. It still increases everyone around you for 15 yards. Uh, their speed by 60% for 8 seconds and a 2 minute cooldown. Now let's look at the damaging abilities. Growl is unchanged, still an 8 second cooldown. This is your taunt. Thrash, not really changed. I mean, it still has a cooldown based off of your haste. So instant strikes all nearby enemies. It's it's you know an AOE that applies a bleed for 15 seconds, and you can fly up to three stacks. But well, it ge generates five rage now, which on live at baseline generates four rage. And also remember, no longer will reduce your the target's movement speed by 50%. Uh, I think it is because we won't have artifact weapons anymore. Mangle kind of has the same deal. It still does the same thing. It does physical damage to target, deals 20% additional damage against bleeding targets, but it will generate 8 rage up from 5 rage on live. So, Mangle will generate more rage now. Uh, then some of these other abilities have not been changed at all. Maul, that's your rage dump, just as physical damage. Swipe, AoE move, inflicts physical damage, not changed at all. Moonfire is not changed, you can still use it in bear form. Deals arcane damage to the target, and then it's a 16 second dot. Skull Bash is unchanged. This is your interrupt, 15 second cooldown. Interrupt someone, and they can't cast any spells in that skull for 4 seconds. Incapacitating Roar is also unchanged. Still a 30 second cooldown. Use it, and everyone around you within 10 yards are incapacitated for 3 seconds. And of course, damage can cancel the effect, or it will cancel the effect, and usable in all shapeshift forms. Now, Hibernate is actually returning. I believe Hibernate was taken out in Warlords of Draenor, 
but it's back. So it allows you to sleep any dragonkin or beast targets for 40 seconds. You can only do it to one target at a time, but you can CC any uh, dragonkin or beast for 40 seconds. So that's awesome. And then here we see Teleport Moonglade. Now the thing is, I believe Teleport Dreamwalk is staying in BFA. The reason that this is Teleport Moonglade is because I did not transfer my druid over to the beta. I just created a new druid. So this druid that I'm currently on, showing these abilities, has not done any of the Legion quests. So I've technically not unlocked Teleport Dreamwalk. But when I did transfer my druid onto the beta, he did have Teleport Dreamwalk. So I believe it's staying for good. Now let's take a look at the passives, which actually are not changed whatsoever. Gore, unchanged. Thrash, Swipe, Moonfire, and Maul have a 15% chance to reset the cooldown of Mangle, and it's caused it to generate an additional 4 rage. Uh, Lightning Reflexes, unchanged. You gain dodge equal to 100% of your critical strike from your gear. Then we have Mastery. Your Mastery is unchanged, increases your max health and healing received by some amount based off your Mastery. And it increases your attack power based off of how much Mastery you have. And then Thick Hide, unchanged, reduces all damage you take by 6%. Now let's take a look at the talents, which most of them, I believe most of them, yeah, are not changed at all actually. Uh, and then we'll also talk about the PvP talents in case you care about those. So the first tier, Brambles, Blood Frenzy, Bristling Fur. Not changed at all. Brambles, if you don't remember, sharp brambles protect you, absorbing and reflecting up to some damage from each attack. While bark skin is active, the brambles also deal nature damage to all nearby enemies every one second. Blood Frenzy Unchanged Thrash also generates two rage every time it deals damage. And then Bristling Fur, 40 second cooldown, bristles your fur, causing you to generate rage based on your damage taken for eight seconds. Uh, then the level 30 tier. So the only change to it is that Tiger Dash is new. So it's a 45 second cooldown, replaces Dash, activates Cat Form, and increases your movement speed by 200%, reducing gradually over five seconds. So I've actually used this ability quite a bit on the beta, and I actually quite like it. I think it's a nice ability. Then there's Intimidating Roar, Unchanged, replaces Incapacitating Roar, 30 second cooldown, unleash a terrifying roar, causing all enemies around you to cower in fear, disorienting them for three seconds, and usable in all shapeshift forms. And the Wild Charge, you can read the breakdown of Wild Charge, but it is unchanged. The level 45 tier, so Balance Affinity. The only change to it is for Astral Influence, increases the range of all your abilities by three yards on live, that's five yards. They just nerfed it down to three yards. And you still learn Moon Conform, Star Surge, Lunar Strike, Solar Wrath, and Sunfire. So you still learn the same abilities. Feral Affinity. So it's pretty much unchanged. Increases your movement speed by 15%. That's not changed. But you will learn Rake, Rip, and Ferocious Bite. And your energy regeneration is increased by 35%. So the only change to that is that it will no longer teach you Shred. But I just went into Cat Form. And as you see here, Shred is actually Baseline. So you will know that no matter what. You don't need to learn Feral Affinity for that. And then we have Restoration Affinity. So your Sarah's Gift is still the same, heals you for 1.5% of your max health every 5 seconds, but if you're at full health, it'll heal a an injured part of your Ray Member instead. Now this will teach you Rejuvenation, Swift Mend, and Wild Growth. So Wild Growth is newly added to that list, because Healing Touch, which it used to teach you, is actually completely removed. Not even Resto Druids have Healing Touch, which is kind of weird because Healing Touch has been in the game since the very beginning, but they've decided to completely remove it. Then we have the level 60 tier, which is completely unchanged. You still have Mighty Bash, it's 50 second cooldown stun, stuns for five seconds, can use can be used in any form. Mass Entanglement, roots all enemies within 15 yards for 30 seconds, 30 second cooldown, also usable in all shapeshift forms. And then Typhoon is unchanged, 30 second cooldown, you blast targets within 15 yards in front of you and their days for six seconds also usable in all shapeshift forms so that tier is completely unchanged the level 75 tier only has one a small change to it it's not sold the forest though sold force is unchanged mangle will generate five more rage and deal 25 percent more damage so unchanged galactic guardian just has a small change to it your damage is a five percent chance on live that's a seven percent so slight nerf 5% chance to trigger a free automatic moonfire on that target. When this occurs, the next moonfire you cast generates 8 rage and deals a 300% increased direct damage. And the second part is still there from live. So yeah, the only change is 7% down to 5%. And then incarnation is unchanged. 
3 minute cooldown, improved bear form reduces the cooldown of all your melee damage abilities and growl to 1.5 seconds, causes Mangle to hit up to 3 targets and increases armor by 15% and it lasts for 30 seconds. Then the level 90 tier, which these all should look familiar to you because it's all not changed at all. So you have Earth Warden. Passive. When you deal direct damage with Thrash, you gain a charge of Earth Warden, reducing the damage of the next auto attack you take by 30% and Earth Warden can have up to 3 charges. Survival of the fittest is not changed. Passive reduces the cooldown of Bark Skin and Survival Instincts by 33% and then Guardian of Loon is not changed either. Passive. Mangle increases the duration of your next Iron Fur by 2 seconds or the healing of your next Frenchie Regeneration by 20%. And then finally, the level 100 tier, which has, once again, a very small change to it. Not Rendant Terror, though. Rendant Terror is unchanged. While in bear form, Thrash also increases your damage dealt to the target and reduces your damage taken from the target by 2% per application of Thrash. And then Lunar Beam just has the small change to it, so its cooldown is being increased from 1.25 minutes to a whopping 1.3 minutes. That is just a 3 second increase. But anyways, it summons a beam of lunar light at your location dealing arcane damage and healing you for some damage over 8 seconds. And then pulverize, unchanged. Devastating blow that consumes 2 stacks of thrash on the target, deals physical damage, and reduces all damage you take by 9% for 20 seconds. So those are all the talents. Once again, not really changed all that much. But now let's take a look at the PvP talents. So if you're not aware, this is how PvP talents will work. You have four bubbles here. This first bubble is the same for all classes and all specs. It is Adaptation, Gladiator's Medallion, and Relentless. You get to pick between one of these three. They're all in the first tier in live. You get to pick between one of them. They're not changed at all. Then these next three bubbles are a giant pool of your already existing PvP talents. So as you can tell, it's no longer on a tier system. It's now on this giant pool system. They you can pick any of these three. So maybe three you might really like that are on the same tier in live. You can pick them all in BFA if you'd like. They just pruned a few of them off, but for the most part, as far as changes go, pretty much none of these have been changed. There are just two of them that have small changes to them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just read the name off and mouse over them. If you want to know what they do, you can pause the video or you can look at your Guardian Druid. But for the two that have small changes to them, I'll of course be going over what those changes are. So Master Shapeshifter is the first one that has a small change to it, and it's under Restoration Affinity. After you Swift Bend, the cast time of your regrowth is reduced by 30% and its healing is increased by 30% for 8 seconds. So on live, that applies to Healing Touch, but as we know, as I mentioned before, Healing Touch is no longer going to become a thing. So that now says regrowth. Then there's Toughness, Den Mother, Demoralizing Roar, Clan Defender, Raging Frenzy, Sharpened Claws, which just has a small change to it as well. Maul will now activate this, so your damaging ability of Maul now activates Sharpened Claws, and it increases damage done by your Swipe and Thrash by 25% for 6 seconds. So whenever you cast Maul for 6 seconds afterwards, Swipe and Thrash deal 25% more damage. Then there's Charging Bash, Entangling Claws, Overrun, Protector of the Pack, Alpha Challenge, Malorn Swiftness, and Roaring Speed. And those are all the PvP talents as well as all of the normal talents. And there you have it. All the changes to Guardian Druids coming in battle for Azeroth. And these changes will go live sometime in mid-July, probably July 17th, but I'm curious to know what you guys think. Do you like these changes or not so much? You can let me know in the comments below. But if you guys enjoyed this video, then you can leave a like on it. You can sub to the channel for more videos like this, and I'll see you guys in the next video.